Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? How can you be so much like Risley, always drinking tea? Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishween. Yeah, I heard one male voice and one female, so it should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. I really can't make sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, he explained everything! Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So, let's just talk here. Alright, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremene affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is, the long-lost primordial sea is probably very close to the fortress of Meripede. Ooh, he's good! He got that right on the first try! That's our Lenny. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the Fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. You're super smart! <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Ah, uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But, let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. <sighs> I can't believe it. The sea will engulf everyone. Just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our Father. No matter what, we're on your side. The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Linny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Given your strength, you might not need our help at all. But if you are ever in danger, 
We will try our best to protect you. Aww, the sound of that makes Paimon feel all warm and safe inside. Uh, Paimon... Paimon's hungry. Oh, uh... You've done so much already. Go get some food. Alright, then we'll catch you guys another time. I feel like I should try to become someone more capable of helping. You're incredibly helpful. Lenny thinks so too. Yeah, you two are always telling me not to push myself, but aren't you just like that as well? It's time for dinner. Welfare meals now being served at the coupon cafeteria. Come on, let's go pick up ours as well. Ah, uh, Traveler and Paimon, uh, over here. Are you here for dinner too, Miss Yijuin? Uh huh. Taking the opportunity to prepare Miss Cloran's dinner as well. Huh. You're right. She's actually sitting in the fortress cafeteria. What would you like to eat? Yep, you can. I've already talked to our chef, Mr. Wolsey. It's all on me today, so you can get whatever you'd like. Just leave it to me. <sighs> so delicious. Paimon's so happy. Paimon wants to feast like this every day. <laughs> Feeling full yet? How's the food? Delicious! Ah, I'm so glad to see you all so happy. Oh, see, the expression on your face just now? The muscle here just moved, which suggests that you're feeling quite relaxed at the moment. Sijuin, do you do this to help your patients or to better understand human beings? A bit of both, I suppose. I'm a melazine, which means I'm very different from human beings. I must know what you're thinking if I want to take good care of you. You're really good at taking care of people. Even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. Really? You're reminded of an older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office? When you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well. Oh, that. I just asked his grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Glorand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His grace also sealed the pipes after Glorand left, to make sure that Linny wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. Although the path was blocked, we still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Clorand had returned. Oh, and I was keeping an eye on Mr. Linny as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been His Grace's style for as long as he's been the leader. Oh, I really wish Monsieur Nervula would come down here more often, too. I feel like he'd like it here, with all the darkness and chaos. Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard.
Grand! Ah, it's you two. How's dinner? It's all right. Miss Sijuin really put in a lot of effort. So we heard that Risley invited you to come down to help, and you saved Fremenade too! You sure work super fast! Oh, it was child's play. Still, Paimon didn't know even Champion Duelist could take on side jobs. Oh, and why aren't you eating with Sijuin and the Duke? Won't you get bored eating by yourself? Miss Sijuin was with you. And the Duke has business of his own. Hmm. Actually, didn't Navia say that you went out for dinner with her as well? Yeah. First time in a long time. First time in a long time? So you mean you've gone out to dinner with her in the past? In the past, yes. <clears throat> you seem to be enjoying yourselves here. Things will be getting messy at the fortress soon. Don't run around unnecessarily. She's finally relaxed. <sighs> I'm on super sleepy. Are you sleepy too? to explain, mate. Goodbye! Uh, hey, wait! What's wrong with these people? They won't even talk to us! They're here! Yeah, there you are! Oh, thank goodness! Quisto and Lavaroon, do you know what happened here? We came here especially to inform you. Something seems to have gone terribly wrong just now. His Grace is telling everyone to evacuate and get out of here! Lavaroon was saying you two are new here and you don't have many friends, so you might slip through the cracks. Haven't you heard all the stories like that? An evacuation is successfully completed, yet you only find out once you do a head count that one or two people are missing. Wait, weren't you the one who brought that up? Why is it suddenly my idea? Hey, shut up! Okay, whatever. The point is, you should come with us. Yeah, he said to get as far away as possible, upwards and outwards. Oh no, it can't be that thing! Whoa, wait, what? What? Hey, where are you going? We have to go find the Duke! You two just go and get out! Go on without us! Hey, hey! Be careful! 